Tonight, anger and grief boil over in Israel after the deaths of six hostages as pressure on Prime Minister Netanyahu grows. Two American service personnel are attacked by a mob in Turkey. The assault caught on camera. And thousands of hotel workers walk out, threatening to disrupt the Labor Day holiday. The outrage in Israel, protests and strikes disrupting the country. Hundreds of thousands demanding Prime Minister Netanyahu strike a deal to free the remaining hostages. Crowds breaking through barriers near his home. President Biden turning up the pressure on Netanyahu as he presses for a ceasefire deal. And the emotional farewell for Hirsch Goldberg Poland, the 23-year-old American Israeli held for nearly 11 months by Hamas. The message from his grieving parents as the families of other Americans still being held speak out. Marcus Moore from Tel Aviv. The disturbing images out of Turkey, two Marines in civilian clothing attacked on a street in broad daylight, the latest on their condition. The deadly early morning shooting on a train in the Chicago suburb, four people killed, what we're learning. Authorities shut off power to hundreds of Southern California homes, why residents were warned they may have to evacuate. The major Labor Day strike, thousands of hotel workers walk the picket lines in several major cities, threatening to disrupt the holiday. The race for the White House, President Biden hits the campaign trail in support of Vice President Harris, their first joint campaign appearance since he exited the race. San Francisco 49ers rookie Ricky Pearsall on the mend. We hear from the hero officer credited with saving his life. And America strong tonight, the sky is the limit for a high-flying teen who's living his childhood dream and inspiring others to take flight. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us on this Labor Day. I'm Mary Bruce, in for David. We begin tonight with heartbreak and outrage in Israel after the deaths of six hostages, including 23-year-old American Israeli Hirsch Goldberg Poland. The deaths igniting massive protests, hordes of demonstrators flooding the streets for a second night, pleading with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to reach a ceasefire deal and bring the remaining hostages home. And in Jerusalem, emotions running high as thousands lined the streets for Goldberg Poland's funeral. His parents, who for months publicly kept up the fight for his release, now honoring the memory of their young son as mourners were heard wailing in the crowd. Netanyahu asking the hostage families for forgiveness, saying they were close to a deal but did not succeed. But tonight, the prime minister refusing to cave to the growing pressure at home and abroad, including from the U.S. ABC's Marcus Moore leads us off from Tel Aviv. Tonight, the largest demonstrations against the Israeli government since the war in Gaza began. Thousands of protesters pouring into Israeli streets for the second straight night desperately calling on Prime Minister Netanyahu to reach a ceasefire and hostage release deal. After those six hostages were confirmed dead in Gaza, including 23-year-old American Israeli Hirsch Goldberg Poland. In Jerusalem today, this throng of demonstrators gathering outside Netanyahu's home, carrying coffins to symbolize the six slain victims. Protesters we spoke to saying Netanyahu is to blame. There is one person that should be blamed, and this is the Prime Minister. I believe that once he goes, everything is going to be stabilized over here. So, so you believe Prime Minister Netanyahu is the one person to blame? Yes, yes, 100%. At one point, the crowd breaking through outer barriers near the property. Demonstrators right now are trying to run up the street here to get past barricades that the security service is right now trying to set up to stop them. We are just a few hundred feet away from the prime minister's residence. Uh, that's this direction. And operations disrupted at the country's main international airport today. As the country's largest trade union called for a mass strike, which lasted for about eight hours. In Jerusalem, thousands lining the streets today for Hirsch Goldberg Poland's funeral. His father saying Hirsch would not want his death to be in vain. Hirsch, we failed you. We all failed you. What you would be pushing for now is to ensure that your death, the deaths of all the soldiers and so many innocent civilians are not Meshav, not in vain. Your starting point would be returning all of the hostages. And his mother breaking down in tears, wishing her son farewell. Mourners audibly wailing in the crowd. Okay, sweet boy, go now on your journey. 
I hope it's as good as the trips you dreamed about because finally, my sweet boy, finally, 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 finally is free. I will love you and I will miss you every single day for the rest of my life. But you're right here. I know you're right here. I just have to teach myself how to feel you in a different way. Four American hostages are believed to still be held in Gaza alive, including 22-year-old Omer Nutra. We are 11 months in. His parents telling ABC News the government should do whatever it takes to bring the hostages home. Now that we just lost another six living hostages and, and they were murdered, uh, just reinforces their urgencies. It's unbearable to us as families. It's even worse to the hostages in Gaza under those conditions, and it has to end. At his first news conference since the recovery of those hostages, Netanyahu today asking their families for forgiveness, saying his government was close to a deal to bring them home, but did not succeed, but insisting he will not cave to pressure. These murderers executed six of our hostages. They shot them in the back of the head. That's what's changed. And now after this, we're asked to show seriousness? We're asked to make concessions? What message does this send Hamas? Netanyahu showing no signs of budging. And Marcus joins us now from Tel Aviv. And Marcus, Hamas today responded, commenting on Netanyahu's position. That's right, Mary. Hamas released a statement today accusing Netanyahu of deliberately disrupting the ceasefire negotiations and saying that his insistence on using military force rather than reaching a deal will lead to the remaining hostages coming home, quote, in coffins. Mary. Marcus, thank you. President Biden today had harsh words for Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, saying bluntly that he's not doing enough to secure a hostage deal. Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris meeting today with the U.S. negotiation team working on this deal. So let's get right to ABC's Elizabeth Schulze at the White House tonight. And Elizabeth, how is Biden upping the pressure on Netanyahu to reach a deal? Well, Mary, President Biden is ramping up the pressure on Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, saying bluntly tonight that Israel's leader is not doing enough to reach a deal that would release the remaining hostages and achieve a ceasefire in Gaza. White House officials tell us they're working around the clock with renewed urgency. The president and Vice President Harris meeting in the Situation Room today with top U.S. negotiators. And in that meeting, Biden made clear he is devastated and outraged, saying Hamas leaders will pay for these crimes. We are told that the president is considering putting forward a final deal this week. If that falls apart, it could mean the end of U.S.-led negotiations. Mary? The president adding to the urgency to get this done. Elizabeth, thank you. Chilling images tonight of a violent assault of two Marines in Turkey, a mob captured on video holding one of the men and putting a sack over his head amid chants of Yankee go home. So let's bring in ABC's foreign correspondent James Longman. And James, what more are you learning about this attack? Yeah, Mary, shocking video out of Turkey tonight. A U.S. Marine attacked by a violent mob. You can see him here in plain clothes. The group grabs hold of him and they, and they put a bag over his head. Another U.S. Marine rushes in to try to save him. He is also attacked. All this happening on the street in Izmir, which is a city in the west of the country. These two men were on shore leave from the USS Wasp, which is stationed in the Aegean. Fifteen people have been arrested as a result. They're from the Turkish Youth Union. Uh, and they say they did this because they hold U.S. personnel responsible for the war in Gaza. They say these men have the blood of Palestinians on their hands, although we should say this group has mounted similar attacks like this before. Tonight, Mary, I can tell you both these U.S. Marines are safe, according to the U.S. Embassy. Mary? And we are grateful for that, James. Thank you. Back here at home now, in the horrific holiday tragedy in Chicago, four people shot and killed on a moving subway train. All of the victims were passengers. Here's ABC's Ariel Reshef with the new details coming in tonight. Tonight, shocking violence on board a moving Chicago subway train. A gunman fatally shooting four passengers in the suburb of Forest Park, the last stop along the CTA's Blue Line, about 15 minutes west of the city. It's a horrible tragedy that four people are dead on Labor Day weekend. Authorities say the horror unfolded on two separate subway cars around 5.30 this holiday morning. Okay, I was told there was three victims. 
Officers swarming the station. Three victims pronounced dead at the scene. Another, a man in his 60s, rushed to the hospital but did not survive. The suspect initially fleeing but tracked down on an entirely different train line by police using surveillance video. We have somebody in custody. A uh, weapon was recovered. This appears to be an isolated incident. Chicago transit officials calling this quadruple shooting a heinous and egregious act and investigation is ongoing. Mary. Ariel, thank you. Now to thousands of hotel workers hitting the picket lines this Labor Day. The strike targeting Marriott, Hilton and Hyatt hotels in several cities, including Baltimore, Honolulu and San Francisco. Workers are demanding higher pay, fairer workloads and the reversal of COVID era job cuts. All this coming amid a record setting holiday travel weekend. Here's ABC's Trevor Alt. Tonight, carrying signs saying one job should be enough and respect our work. Thousands of hotel workers striking on one of the busiest travel weekends of the year. Been here 44 years. This is the first time we've actually been on strike. The walkouts began this weekend after talks broke down between the Unite Here Union and major hotel chains Hyatt, Hilton, Marriott and Omni. Strikes now happening in major cities like San Francisco and Seattle. Michael Correa joining the picket line in Boston. All they're worried about is their shareholders and making them the millions that they get every single year. While we're just trying, we're trying to survive. Keep step, baby. During the pandemic, hotels cut back on services like housekeeping and they cut staff too. Now that the pandemic is over, the guests are back, but the union says staffing still hasn't caught up. I'm exhausted every single day. Um, and we just need better staffing and scheduling. The union has had success with other recent strikes, winning record contracts at hotels in the Los Angeles area and at Detroit casinos. And Mary, the hotels say they remain willing to negotiate, but they do have contingency plans in place to make sure business still runs smoothly. Meantime, the union says they have already authorized several other strikes in more new cities. Mary. OK, we shall see Trevor. Thank you. Now to the race for the White House and Vice President Kamala Harris on a Labor Day blitz courting key union voters. Harris teaming up with President Biden in the must-win state of Pennsylvania, their first joint campaign appearance since Harris became the nominee. Former President Donald Trump also expected to return to the campaign trail later this week. ABC senior White House correspondent Selena Wang reporting from Pennsylvania tonight. Hello, Pittsburgh! In their first joint campaign appearance since Kamala Harris replaced Joe Biden at the top of the ticket, the vice president and president side by side, kicking off the final sprint to Election Day in Biden's home state of Pennsylvania. Are you ready to elect Kamala Harris our next president of the United States of America? Harris working to win over critical union voters on this Labor Day with a boost from Joe Biden, who calls himself the most pro-labor president in history. Today, Biden passing that torch. Kamala, the reasons I do, the unions are the spine of this economy. And Harris for the first time making it clear that she, like the president, is opposed to the proposed sale of U.S. steel to Nippon Steel of Japan. I couldn't agree more with President Biden. U.S. steel should remain American-owned and American-operated. And I will always have the back of America's steel workers. Harris and her running mate Governor Tim Walz today on a battleground blitz through the blue wall states of Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin. When we win this election, we'll have your back just like you've had our back. A new ABC News Ipsos poll shows Harris holds a 52 to 46 percent lead nationally among likely voters. Neither candidate getting a post convention bump on the issues. Voters still trust Donald Trump more to handle the economy and immigration. But on abortion, Harris has the edge as Donald Trump keeps shifting his position on reproductive rights. And Selena joins us now from Pittsburgh. And Selena, there was a bit of a scare earlier today, a car accident involving Governor Walz's campaign motorcade. But thankfully tonight he is doing all right. Thankfully, Governor Walls is unharmed, but some members of his staff have minor injuries, including a broken arm. It was the vans near the back part of Governor Walls's motorcade that crashed on a highway in Milwaukee. Walls later went to the hospital to check on his staff. He also thanked first responders and Secret Service for their quick reaction and Biden and Harris for calling to make sure that he's OK. Mary. OK, Selena in Pittsburgh tonight. Thank you.
Now to the new details coming in tonight about the San Francisco 49ers rookie Ricky Pearsall shot during an alleged robbery in downtown San Francisco and the police officer hailed as a hero for saving his life. We hear from her tonight about her words of encouragement to Pearsall. More now from ABC's Melissa Adon. New details tonight in the shooting of San Francisco 49ers wide receiver Ricky Pearsall. Police say a 17-year-old suspect confronted Pearsall, shooting him in the chest during what they say was an attempted robbery. Veteran San Francisco Sergeant Joel Horrell was nearby, quickly rendering aid, putting pressure on the wound. I'm holding him and um, I'm telling him to breathe and I go, just be calm, okay? Pearsall asking Sergeant Horrell if he was going to die. I looked at him and I was like, look at me, okay? Because I could feel a change happening. And it worried me because I wanted him to be as normal as he could. The 25-year San Francisco police veteran telling him, be strong like you're on the field. God is with us. It's not your time. That's Pearsall seen there, conscious, getting into an ambulance with blood on his shirt. The 23-year-old now on the mend, recovering at home, released from the hospital. We are 49 Pearsall, a first-round draft pick in this year's draft, was preparing for the upcoming season just days away. Mary, the 49ers has placed Pearsall on the NFL's non-injured list, sidelining him for at least the next four games. And Mary, that teen suspect could be tried as an adult. Mary. Okay, Melissa, thank you. And now to the Justice Department seizing an airplane of Venezuela's embattled President Nicolas Maduro. The plane, described as the equivalent of Air Force One, was illegally purchased for $13 million through a shell company and smuggled out of the U.S., according to the DOJ. It was seized in the Dominican Republic and later flown to Florida. Maduro's government calling the U.S. action, quote, piracy. And when we come back, the new images from the wreck of the Titanic, the visible changes to the once majestic ship at the bottom of the North Atlantic. And the shocking moment, a car crashes into a couple's home in Arizona, narrowly missing them and their dogs just as they were sitting down for dinner. Next tonight, there are renewed concerns tonight about worsening landslides in Southern California. In a neighborhood there, authorities are shutting off power to more than 100 additional homes, saying there's a danger for electrical equipment. Dozens of homes also under an evacuation warning. Authorities telling residents they should be ready to leave at a moment's notice. And a terrifying close call for a Phoenix couple and their dogs. They say it felt like a bomb went off when a Mustang crashed through their home, narrowly missing the couple and their pups. Remarkably, everyone survived. The driver was arrested. The couple now asking for donations to help rebuild. And when we come back, the new images of the Titanic and the changes to the famous wreck. To the index now, new images from the wreck of the Titanic show changes to the famous ship. A 15-foot section of the port side railing has fallen to the ocean floor. Scientists say it is a reminder that the Titanic is deteriorating. Much of the ship's fine art has also broken down. But the bronze of the Roman goddess Diana from the First Class Lounge does remain. And when we come back, America Strong, the 17-year-old soaring to his dreams. Finally tonight, America Strong and the 17-year-old soaring to his dream. On this Labor Day in Fayetteville, North Carolina, one young man's career is taking off. 17-year-old Tyler Moore just earned his private pilot license, taking his first flight as a licensed pilot, turning his passion into a profession. It was amazing. It was one of the best moments of my life. Tyler's dad, retired First Sergeant Donald Moore, served in the Army for more than two decades, stationed at Fort Bragg. Tyler inspired by what he saw. I used to just see the planes flying over my house. Every time I went to go on a commercial airliner, I was just fascinated with how the plane's flying. It's a mixture as freedom of movement. Tyler, now one of the youngest pilots in the country, just started his junior year of high school, is no stranger to hard work, all honor classes, a 4.3 GPA, and an athlete playing basketball and golf, hoping all that hard work and dedication will land him his dream job. I'm trying to get accepted into the United States Air Force Academy. If that doesn't work out, I plan to be a commercial pilot one day to work for a major airline. Tyler, well on his way. Thank you for watching. I'm Mary Bruce. David Muir, right back here tomorrow. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.